going to flip the screen around. I know she's going to Welcome remember. to the Wildflowers. Books, booze, and banter. Yes, and this is number... I didn't write down what 23? number. 23? No, 24. 24, maybe? I think it's 24. 24. I'm Judy. I'm Carol. And I'm Peggy. See, somebody asked us who, which was which, and uh, we thought everybody knew who we were, but apparently that's not We're not that famous. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> we listen, though. There we are. Exactly. exactly. Glad, glad to see you, ladies. And good to see you. But before we actually banter, um, I have something fun to show everybody yes. today. This book, Proudly She Served, Celebrating Women in Uniform, just came out, and I had the opportunity to work with Steve Alpert, who is the artist for this book. And he's actually going to be joining us for one of our podcasts. That's exciting. Uh, very soon. Um, it's, an, it's an amazing book. It's an amazing story. And I, had, I was editing the stories for them. And it's very hard to edit when you're so engrossed in the actual stories because these women... They just are mind blowing, you know. Yeah. It really is astounding. And so, he 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 talks about Steve talks about how intimidating it is to paint them and get their spirit and the, right. the people that they are. And so he's done an awesome job. So it's called Proudly She Serves, Celebrating Women in Uniform. And we're going to definitely be talking a lot more about this when Steve's on the podcast. But I just wanted to share that with oh, you. Oh, some of the paintings, are they in, in the book too? They're, yes. Oh, yeah. They're all in the book. That's yes, amazing. Uh, that is amazing. Yeah. It's yep. important stories. I'm glad that this is very important book stories. Now, Steve Alive Albert is a Long Island based uh, artist. Well, yes. he's in Quag and in Manhattan. And you see on my wall right there that uh -huh. painting? That's from Steve. And Did he do a painting that Biden had, you know, like where it was a woman, women saluting the yes, flag? Yes. I think I remember yes. something yes, uh, about we that. Had oh, him. that was in that other book. Remember, right? We had him at our um, to do right. a show at our bookstore, Turning oh, the Court. That's True books right. Yes, right. I, I mean, we were just getting started. We didn't get a yeah. very big turnout for him, which was a disappointment. But he he has a fascinating story of just how he started mm -hmm. in, in doing this, because he had a career, but he had a passion to do painting, and he had a very yeah. supportive wife. And I'll let him tell the story when he oh, comes. Oh, good. I look so, forward to hearing yeah. that. Yeah. So, so he's going to be on the podcast with us. Yes, he is. Okay. And, and nice. he's going to bring his dog, Marky, because he knows oh. how much I love dogs and he Excellent. loves dogs. And Judy's going to be thrilled and Peggy's going to be thrilled. Mm -hmm. I think Marky is a lab. Oh. I think. I, I love think. labs. Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. Yeah. So he, yeah, uh, Steve is just... Just I love Steve. He's such an awesome guy and a good friend, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, is this book out yet? Yes, it okay. just came out this week. Yes. And they actually self-published it. They did it, and um, they learned through the ropes. And um, actually, um, Mick, how does you say his last name? Mick Wyland, he, um, I actually got him another job, Mick Wyland, with um, designing, web, uh, book and website designing. And I got him a, a job with another um, person who's a photographer called Oh God! They saved New York, and it, it's about firefighters. Oh, interesting. And okay. it's 9/11, and oh, okay. uh, and so um, I just started working with them on that one. So, and that oh. one's an interesting story too, but I won't go into that now. But I'm anyway, not okay. now later. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not now later. So Another podcast. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. So good. That's my uh, banter. Anybody else? Oh. Bantering? Well, I just got finished um, animal sitting for my kids. They were away <laughs> since last Thursday. All right, right, right. Did they, everyone she, survive? She didn't say Every dog sitting. She said animal sitting. All right. So, so they have a chinchilla, a guinea pig, a rabbit, and a dog. And they do have two uh, hermit crabs too. But they didn't ask me to feed them, so I'm oh. wondering if the, something happened to the hermit crabs. Did you check on them? No, I never even went up there because they would have oh given God. me instructions. Yeah. So I guess, you know, you don't have to really do much with them. You just have to make sure the sponge yeah. is wet. Corey so, had hermit crabs. Yeah. I think she named one Seth. For yeah. some reason, I remembered that. Oh, I forgot she, their names. I did know their names. Yeah, so. 
But anyway, I, that's what I've been doing, and yeah. so I've been so I've had a dog yeah. all week for Aww. you know how long were they gone? Eight, he's a nine, good dog. Ten dog. Days. He's, he's a, a very good dog. Porter is his Porter's name. Awesome. He's a very good. And what kind of dog is he? He's a black lab. Yeah. Lab. Yeah. Yep. That's very awesome. Good. He's a good boy. He was very. a good companion. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So that's what I've been very doing. Cool. Very cool. What about you? Do you have any? What What I know? I just. Um, not that much. No, I, have to say. Not. No, I was just I, one interesting news story that when I was watching the news today, I don't know if you heard it, that uh, Congress passed a very important piece of legislation. I use important in air quotes today about uh, what's the, they they named the AR-15 the oh, national oh, that's, national gun. Oh of the my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. Santos, George Santos. <laughs> was was right, I thought of you. Yeah. Yeah. I said. There is no I mean, national gun. What are they talking this about? Is what what is we're wrong? doing with our time? What They're is our pleasing the the ma the it's MAGA a love people. letter to yeah. the NRA. But yep. I just thought I thought it, it's when sickening. I saw that. It's just sickening. No, but it's, I, I, I had to turn off the television. I did. I yeah. turn it off. I got three eggs though today. Oh, the first time. Good. So I know spring is coming. Judy has chicken. <laughs> she, she didn't go to the store and buy three eggs. No, she has chicken. No, no, that's right. I should clarify that. Yeah. No, because a lot of, not a lot of people know that when you have chickens, that they don't consistently lay during the winter months because yeah. they need yeah. light. To, you know, oh, okay. And so, and oh, it's that's not so very, interesting. Yes, yeah, I yeah. didn't know that until I started We should that. do a chicken podcast, and oh. you should bring one of your chickens. I could do that. I that would be fun. I'm not a dog. 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 i am not a dog i that's so funny. Well, yeah, yeah. I, so I could do that. I could do a podcast on chickens. Well, yeah, but anyway, it's spring. It's spring, spring is a lot. coming yeah. because I've got three eggs in the we'll coop We'll do today. it outside. Yeah. Yeah, we could do Yeah, that. we could do it out on the deck. Okay. You just have to hear the planes flying over because I'm near an airport, so. I don't know if I'll do that, though. Oh, uh, no. I don't know if I'll bring her. No. Bring them. Yeah. No. No. We'll figure that no. out because no. you know, you know, our last podcast was over an hour and seventeen minutes, so I don't know <laughs> if we want to extend. Well, which one was that? Our very last one, which was Valentine's Day. No. 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 Oh, it was boycotting. about the boycotting thing. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay. It was interesting, yeah. but I don't know how. Patient. Which was a clue on Jeopardy last night. Yes. Boy, oh, yes. yes. Like, yeah, and I knew it, and they didn't. I know. None of them knew it. I said, they, how could there's they not know There's a lot of things. I'm like, how could you not know this? I know. Because and then old. all this stuff. <laughs> and all this stuff. I said, how did you know that? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so well, should I start the wine then? I would say uh, yes. Probably, yes. Okay, it is my turn to do the wine. And so usually I just run into 777 Liquors and Wines in West Islip. Uh, as I usually do right before the podcast. So not a lot of prep. Oh, you do that before the podcast? I do, because I don't have a lot of time. She's a busy gal. And so I went in and I met a very nice lady who there, I have never met her before. Her name yep. is Liz. Hi, Liz. And I first picked up a bottle of wine and I said, how much is this one? It's $59.99. <laughs> but I said, no, uh, I can't do that one. So she recommended, I told her about the podcast. She recommended that we try this one. It's called Truth Be Told. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. Great name for. I love it. Say the name again. Truth Be Told. And the label is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We all yeah. like, it reminds you of something. It's called Blackout Poetry or Blackout Art. Okay. Which, that's right. a new phrase for me. I didn't yeah. know that. I think that's what it's called, and I'm going to remember okay. to get that poster for Daphne. So, thank you. I didn't, I don't know much about it, but in the back here it says it's Columbia Valley. So, and it's from 2019. Oh, so it's Washington State? I don't know. Isn't Columbia Valley in Washington it State? It doesn't say. I sh this is because I don't do any prep before <laughs> we come in. I could okay, we still love her. We understand that she's very busy. And I'm just like, yeah, I brought the wine. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> you wouldn't be allowed in that door. And she said this wine was really very good. So this is about... I, a, even I can't see okay, this. Okay, I have the glasses. It's about $22.99. Oh, okay. So not a, not right. a bad price. No. And I am ready to Bottle, taste it. Thy truth be told, winery... And yeah, Washington State. Oh, nice. Yeah, Good Benjamin job. City, Washington. Good job. This is, this this is a really nice on you. There. <laughs> you I'm the sexy that. librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wish they looked that good on me. Well, anyway, okay, so... Oh, okay, um, so you 
we go? Birthdays? Uh, yeah, my sister's birthday is Sunday, so happy, happy birthday, birthday, Laura. Happy birthday, Laura. Um, my dad's birthday would be on February 27th. Oh. Well, it is, but he's passed. But okay, happy well, birthday, cheers. Dad, happy Chester. Happy birthday to Chester. Um, I was just going to make fun, but I won't. No, don't make fun. No, not of your dad. Okay. But when people put, like, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Birthday in heaven. heaven. Yeah. Oh, my mom would have been 250 yeah. years old and she's done. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I, I know a lot of people do people it. People breathe in different ways. I, exactly. I know. Exactly. I know. Very good chakra. Yeah. It see. <laughs> this smells very nice. Okay. All right. Let's see let's how it, do it. I can't tell you what to expect because I didn't read it. Mmm. It's yummy. Oh, I like it. That first taste oh. was nice. Mmm. It's good. That's very nice. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much, Liz. That's very nice. Yeah, it's good. Truth be told, That's good. I like this. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> good this actually <laughs> kind of reminds me a little of Bonterra. And you know how I oh, love Bonterra. Oh, you love your Bonterra. Mm. Do you have Bonterra at your home right now? I have no wine at my home right now. <gasps> I know. Oh, well, I'm doing, doing, I'm doing a drier, a drier. <laughs> wow. Well, no, I have white wine at home. Well, so maybe wine. 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 Red wine. <laughs> white wine is wine too. No more red. I, hey, listen, I, if you want to consider it not wine, then it make me feel better because that's what I drink all the time. No, I have, you know, I haven't been stocking up lately. Yeah, no, I stock oh, up, but so I, I have, don't have to stock same. up as often because I don't. Yes, same. You know, same. but I did, like you, like on Thursday, I pretended it was Friday and I had wine. Well, I did do that, and that was I my last bottle said. of red on Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I almost opened on Thursday. Mm. No, no. Yeah, no. I kept on doing that, and then it was like 9:30. I said, well, "Screw it! I'm opening up a bottle of wine." This is. I'm going to go back and get some of this. More. Mm -hmm. This is really yeah. This very is good. good. I like and it. And it's very good. smooth. It's yeah. It's, it's full bodied. It's yeah. full bodied. I would say it's a great Cabernet. Um, mm. I don't have a lot of adjectives. I always go like oh, full body, but it's it is. It's very smooth. Yeah, I like now, it. Yeah. It's cold. Is this because it was in your car? Or I don't was know. It? It's been here a while. Right. Yeah. I didn't have long of a drive. It is isn't right. cold, but it's supposed to be. Wine is supposed to be kept at 50, red wine, 55 I'd like it, degrees. I'd like it a little bit more at room temperature. Yeah. So, yeah. For no, me, I like it. I like it. It's perfect. I think it's perfect, too. I don't think it's perfect. It's perfect, Carol. <laughs> oh, so what would we rate it? I'm going to give this a five. Oh. oh. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I would give this a five. five. Yeah. yeah, I really This am. reminds me of the whole ranch that we had that we all liked. Yes. It's a nice, you hearken body. You hearken back to that one a She lot. loves because the whole I ranch. really like it, yeah. and that v and &A, I just bought another oh, bottle of the v &A. Yeah, That was good. I didn't open it yet, because mm. that's going to be special. I'll drink that for you. Yeah. With you. <laughs> all right, so you're saying five, you're saying five. Yeah, I, you know me. My barometer is with the Bonterra, so this reminds me a lot of Bonterra. I'll say four point seven five. Oh come on, that's a five. Uh, this is yeah. a five. I'm not. Gonna... What is it lacking? The three tenths of a, a wildflower. Room temperature. Three is is missing three petals. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't don't. Delicious. Well, don't blame it on the wine. Don't. <laughs> You're blaming it on the wine because it's it not like room a temperature. That sounds like a song. Don't blame it on the wine. My house, well. <laughs> my house, no, my house is a little warm. I feel like it's, it's quite okay. Wait, I just, uh -oh. I just that no. doesn't look like a good text. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Can you come? Um, Not a great day. Okay, okay. Never mind. We'll, we'll talk about Figure that out later. Okay. okay. All right. So good, uh, good for the wine. So I'm yeah. done. So good. who does the book? I'm doing the book, and unfortunately, the book that I was supposed to do, I didn't finish because I thought that this podcast was on March 4th. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked a big, fat book. Oh, I oh. am currently reading oh. Stephen King's latest book, Fairy Tale, oh. and I haven't been consistently reading for like hours every day because right. I'm doing all the things I'm studying Spanish and taking uh, care of all these animals <laughs> taking care of animals volunteer and, and yes I volunteer at the food pantry so anyway so what I did I said well I'm not going to review it yet because I didn't finish it but I am loving it Okay. And I'm about halfway through it. So then I, I remembered, I, I read this um, a couple of years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. It's another Stephen King title uh, called Later. And this book, I don't want to give away too much because there's a lot of twisty-turny things in it. And 
you know, like you want the story to unfold gradually, find right. out what's going on. So this will be brief because I don't want to blow it. Uh. But it is uh, the main character is a little boy named Jamie. <laughs> I read it two years ago. This is I, not like I, you. I, I, I know. Have, like, I know. Oh, okay. okay, Jamie Conklin. Uh -huh. And uh, well, I like the name. The name. the book is being narrated by Jamie when he's 22 years old. The book starts when Jamie Conklin is six years old. Okay. And right from the beginning, he he lives with his mom, who's a single mom. And um, she works in publishing. She oh. has like her own little Ooh. publishing company that used to be her and her brother owned it. And he ended up, he had early onset Alzheimer's when he was 42. Oh. And he ended up living in a nursing home very oh, young. That's so sad. And, um, and you know, she struggles, she's busy, she's got a kid. And um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> So anyway, you find out early on in the book that Jamie has this um, special power, like I guess. Yeah, it's not really, it's not like a superpower, but Jamie can see people right after they die. He doesn't see them for very long, but like... Um, if somebody died and he was there, he could walk into the room and see that dead person, and he finds out that dead, the dead always have to tell the truth. Wait, wait. So when he sees... For instance, right yeah. in the beginning, I'm going to give you a little scenario that happens in the book. Okay. So he's coming home from school. His mom picked him up from school, and it's right around Thanksgiving, and he did one of those hand turkeys. Yes. Right. And he painted it green, yeah. and... And he thinks it's like the best turkey, yeah. and he shows it to his mom, and she really loves it. And, yeah. You know, it's going to go on the refrigerator. And they walk into their apartment building when they get up to the hallway where their door is. Their neighbors are out, and they look very distraught. This one man, he looks very distraught. He's all disheveled, and like you can see that he's been crying. And um, and they and you know, the mother says, "Oh my God, so and so, what happened?" He said, "Oh, Mona died. Mona died today." Now Jamie is standing there, and he sees Mona. Mona is standing right there. Oh, so she's still alive. How he sees her? Yes, he sees oh, wow. her in her nightgown. Okay. How she died? Right. Like dead people are always in the clothes that um, oh, that right. they had. Okay. So he sees her. And uh, he starts talking to her, and the mother is like looking at him, like, "What the hell is going on?" Yeah, because she thinks that he's like a little insane. She always worries that something wrong with my kid, right. and she doesn't quite believe that he could see these dead people. But this time, he proved it to her. Okay. And uh, first of all, he told her, he said, "Well, Mrs. Whatever her name was, Mrs. So and So said that." My turkey is really ugly and turkeys aren't green because ghosts oh. have to tell the truth. Oh. And oh. So, uh, anyway, oh, in, order, in order to prove it to his mother, this isn't why it happened. Like, um, the husband said, Oh, I can't find her ring. She always takes them off before she goes to bed and puts them right on the night table, and I can't find them anywhere. And then she tells Jamie, tell them that they're in the, the top shelf in the back of my bag in the closet. So um, he said, why'd you put them there? And she said, I was having a stroke and there was a lot of blood going into my brain. So, oh, wow. and, and that's how, that's when the mother says, oh my God, this, because they yes. do find the rings there. there. But anyway, through the story, the story develops. <laughs> it becomes like a mystery story too. There's, okay. there's a drug thing going on in it and the police are involved and um, demons and oh, wow. it's a very quick fun ride of a read wow. so I I mean I mean you read it so quickly it's a lot of fun it, and is it scary though no I didn't find it scary yeah writing. no I didn't I mean that's you know of course there's demon there's a demon yeah and that's a little scary and him bumping into these ghosts and you know there's a crooked cop in it and and at the end there's a big like surprise twist Okay. So I highly okay. recommend this. It's just a little paperback, a later Stephen King. Most of his, a lot of his books, I should say, I don't know about those, were made into movies. Was this one? Yeah, no, no, movies? this is like, 
he came up with like a different publishing thing and he's got another one called Joyland. They all look like this <laughs> retro look on okay. them and and I wonder if that's where they got the movie from. I, they, he sees dead people. That's, I thought you know about what? That. But it six sense. Yeah. 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 I I don't know. This is a little. This is a little different. Right. Right. So um. But anyway, I really loved it. You so. like Stephen King novels. I do yeah, like Stephen King. Like some of his stuff, it, you know, yeah. I like his really early stuff. I was a dedicated reader then. Then some of the stuff I read, I said, oh okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, yes, I do I like Stephen him. King. I do, and I think that I, I hear things about him as a person, and I think he's a very good person yeah. too, yes. and that helps me to like his yeah. fiction. Yeah. So. Yeah. Have yeah. you read any of his? Yeah, novels? yeah, I have. Okay. And um, Misery was um, one of Misery. the ones that I, you know, it took me a few pages to really get into, but once I was, it was like God. And that's the thing, though. It's like. His books do translate quite well to movie theater. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you watch the movie, well, I don't watch the really scary ones. Like yeah. it. <laughs> I won't. I just oh won't. I can't. No. I, I can't. I'm not out of form. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. But I no, did I watch horror. Misery, and Misery was so good. And actually, the book is even more yes, disturbing. The, the, the book was very disturbing. But more so. um, what's her name? Kathy, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates was it. She did an excellent <laughs> job. She was perfect for that part. Yeah, yeah. And she's a and lunatic. She's talented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she and is. And then James Conn, he passed away. I know he was very good in yeah. it too. So, so that, that was one. a good review, yeah. though, Peg. Yeah. For, you, you yeah. So part. really, later Stephen King. So obviously, read it. because it's been a couple of years. You said since you read it. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that you you don't feel like you remembered a lot. You remembered you enough remembered that it, it was. Oh yeah. Well, I remember the story, but like you don't remember like people's names and stuff. Oh right. So, right. You know. Good job. Thank so. you for sharing. Okay. Stephen King. My pleasure. Well done. Awesome. Here we go. Very cool. Okay. This wine is so good. I'm almost done with mine. <laughs> Well, there's more really? in the Come on, you guys. <laughs> I'm just sitting here drinking it. Right? It's and so it's good. Uh, obviously, she's catching up from dry January. Yes, this is so. why I make it all up. Yeah. Well, it's my turn for the uh, topic. Uh, what do you got for us? The topic today, I named it bullying, teasing, or just joking. Oh, I'll need more wine for this one. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a question for both of you. Oh, okay. Is there a joke that you normally like remember that you like to tell, or that you remember that you think is funny, or that you heard, and you it, it's your go-to joke? Like if you're with a bunch of friends and you want to share this joke, is there ever? You mean that if we'd say a joke? Yeah, if you would. Is there one that you ever think about? You know what? I never remember jokes. That's how my mom was. I always want to. People will tell me a joke. I said, oh my God, that's so funny. I have to yeah. remember it. And then I never remember jokes. So, and I'm not a good joke teller. Right. My, my, I, the only you know. joke I ever know, and it's, it's, it's more, it's very immature-ish, is my, my, but it's a juvenile, not immature, but my, my nephew said it's at our wedding. Oh. My nephew, Alex, you know how you have the video and they all, you go to yeah. the tables. Yes, and, yes. So cute. He was a ring boy. Alex, and now he is, you know, 23. Yeah. You know? Uh, he is so, uh, he goes, why do they invite the mushroom to the party? Because he's a fun guy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's, <laughs> that's see, and you remember right. that. Right. I, mean, you know, yeah, I, I like that. Why did the chicken it's cross the road? Yeah. 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 Yeah, like the yeah, there was a couple of jokes that my, uh, my husband used to tell to the kids when they were little, and he... It, they're the kind of jokes that you tell like it's a story that really happened right, to you. Right, right. And, and, <laughs> and they were so corny at the end. And then it, every time we were in another place with him, he'd be telling the joke <laughs> to somebody else. We'd go, oh. Yeah, yeah that's you know, yeah. Like so, I remember like my um, uncle and aunt when they would come, a certain um, uncle and aunt, not all my uncle's aunts were like this. We would all sit around after supper time. We called this supper where I grew up. And... All of a sudden, like the jokes, and the, it would just come out, and we would just be laughing so hard, tears coming out of our eyes. Like the only jokes that I used to remember as a, as when I was younger was mommy, mommy jokes, and some of those weren't very nice. Mommy, mommy, there's a mummy in the room. There um, was one about a mummy. I don't remember that one. I said, mommy, mommy, I, 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 um, I don't want to go to Europe, and she says, shut up and keep swimming. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I remember yeah. them. Uh, yeah. All those, yeah. yeah. So I thought you meant, like, the, there are some jokes where they're, like, you know, mm-hmm. the mother jokes, like, your mother's oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. no. Your yeah. mother's so old, she owes Jesus a nickel. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you remember the joke? I, I did. <laughs> well, and on April Fool's Day, we used to always love to try to trick my dad, which was like, oh, there's an elephant behind you. We were right, very yeah. young. We yeah. were very young. <laughs> but, you know, those kind of things and um, that kind of thing. But let me ask another question. Do you have favorite comedians that you like? Yes. I love Sarah Silverman. Yes. Oh, I like Sarah Silverman, I think too. She's, she's awesome. When I was really younger, like, when I'm talking about, like, my kids' age now, like, 14, 15, although that's older than they are, but we got, my brother and I got into Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, Remember wow. Him? That was, yeah. and he, he was, was very disgusting vulgar. to me. For, I didn't like him. For a 15 year old, you well, like, yeah. oh, that's I right. found him offensive. Yeah, he, I, we I used to like age. Louis C.K. until like he oh. got weird and then I, See, but I liked him when he used to talk about his kids and it was funny mm-hmm. and then the whole weird thing happened and I, I couldn't I like you Sarah don't listen Silverman. to him. Yeah, I like, I like her. You probably don't know who Stephen Wright is. He, he was quite popular maybe 20 years ago. Very dry sense of humor. And it was just always like these one word clips or one phrases that would just made you think they were very funny. So I liked him a lot. Yeah. Dan Sedaris, I love. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I liked Ellen DeGeneres. I found her funny with her. I never heard her. David Sedaris doing kind of stand up though. I just I've heard him in the mall. Yeah, and, and, and his stuff. books, but like he's he funny. narrates his books. Right, yeah, he's he very is, funny. He's and funny. his books are funny. And when he reads yeah. them, he's funny. Yeah, I used to love uh, George Carlin. When yes. I was George Carlin. Yeah. I used to love um, Bill Cosby. I did. I yeah. grew up with I, Bill Cosby too, comedy. He had all of his I, albums. And like Kevin and I. The, the, I the dentist. Was, the dentist was yeah. yeah. And, was and great. Fat was Albert. And and yeah. I know. He yes. was so. He was very yes. funny. Very I did listen funny. to Bill Cosby's yeah. show. I did. And uh, Robert Klein we used to listen to. Right. right. And right. Um, Seinfeld. his name. Yes, Seinfeld. I like I Paula. I only know from his show. I, I like Paula Poundstone. Oh, I, I like Paula Poundstone. I, know, I find her a little annoying. Oh, see, I find I her like very her. entertaining. But all right, now what do you think about Joan Rivers, her sense of humor, mm-hmm. um, Don Rickles, mm-hmm. and there's another one, Jeff Ross. I don't know if you're familiar I don't with know him. Who he is. He uh, does the Roastmasters General. He's the Roastmaster General, I and I don't like that. the roasts. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing about Joan Rivers is that when she first began on the Ed Sullivan show, all her humor was focused on her her physical self. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Making fun of herself. Yeah. The same with Phyllis Diller too. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as Joan got more and more popular, I mean, I, she's <laughs> I shouldn't even laugh, but she made a joke about Elizabeth Taylor's weight gain, mm-hmm. and she said something about when Elizabeth Taylor stands in front of the microwave saying, hurry up, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and I couldn't stop laughing, but that was mean, but yeah, it was, it was funny. Mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's, you know. Well, a lot of jokes are mean. Yes, but but they shouldn't, that's, yeah. So, what do you think about that? When it's humor, be, you know, okay. No, no, should people be politically correct then? Uh, you know what, it's funny, I was well, just listening to some comedian well, on I'm NPR, sure and he was saying, you know, like, like you can't really be that funny anymore. He said that was all the part of stand-up comic, you know, being a stand-up comic. To, yeah, yeah, you're making fun of real-life things. And um, I don't know if I agree with the whole politically correct thing. I understand not bringing racism into right, it, right. but you know what? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I well, I don't. When I look at what I like for humor, it's to be honest, it's, it's more of the relatable humor that everybody goes to. Commenting on parenting, you right, know, right. Or well, that's you know, my like, best con like, of you. That's the best yeah. kind. Mm-hmm. Or e- I mean, even with the Joan Rivers, when you brought up the self-deprecating humor, right? You know, even if it, t- cause Sarah Silverman does some yeah, of that too. Right, she right. touches on her Jewish heritage, you know. Right, and so, right. You know, I don't think too bad about. She's talking about herself, right? You know, right, and then pe- right. you have a right to speak about yourself in any way you want yeah. to do. And I. I think that, but I mean, I'm more comfortable with that. I don't, I don't really like when it touches on more. Is that meaning it's PC or not? I'm not PC. I don't. Yeah, I, mean, right, I have a lot right. of work to do for right. sure. I said, but I mean, 
I, I, when I look back, even with Bill Cosby, I was mm-hmm. laughing at the general jokes about how, you know, like right, that right. one, you know, how he makes chocolate cake for his kids for breakfast because it has yeah. milk and eggs right, and right, all yeah, right. To me, that's, if you could well, make Eddie Murphy, Murphy funny. Eddie yeah. Murphy had a, my kids harken back to Eddie Murphy when he was like, you know, when you're a kid, you get an ice cream cone and, and you tease him, like, I got an ice cream cone and you don't have any. And he's like acting like this kid and all of a sudden the ice cream falls. He goes, <gasps> And he makes yeah. that face. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's hysterical. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Like well, T- Tina Fey and Amy, Amy Poehler. Uh, Poehler. Two of my favorite. I don't know why yeah. I mentioned I'm not a too. huge yeah. fan of Amy Poehler oh, for some I reason. Just However, love her. last night yeah. I watched the movie Wine Country. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that actually. And it's with Amy either. Poehler, team, t- Tina Fey, um, Rachel Dratch, and it's all about these friends going to Wine Country for Rachel Dratch's 50s. <gasps> like Sideways? No, no. It's it's funny. Funny. Oh, no, I love sideways. But, oh, I already told Natasha for my birthday oh. in two years. Judy, you and I will do it. You no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, wait, that's another Screw conversation. Screw you, Natasha. We want to Another go. conversation. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway. But I wanted to tell you something that I remember, because right. you're talking about Sarah Silverman. I got an email from Sarah Sil- Silverman when, um, what? when we had Turn of the Corkscrew. Remember that book came out? It was like the Maria Kondo book. Yes. And it says, um, the what what was the name of the Maria Kondo book about the magical thinking? Not magical. No, I, I, what? I need it. it. I need the name of it. Okay. Um, no. Sarah Sil- Silverman wrote a satirical book and oh. it's the something about not giving a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well that's it, you know, they were she did that skit with she was dating that late the guy at the time. He's a late night host. Um, <coughs> um, oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. And yeah. they I she goes, I'm I'm fucking Matt Damon. Did you, ever, did you see that one where and oh, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm fucking Matt Damon. Yeah, because he... Hysterical. Matt yeah. Damon was in on it, and, you yeah, know, yeah. she was just... It was... She's... Yeah, she's I like her. really, really funny. You know what? Anyway, you, know, you didn't let me finish my oh, story. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. He's all like, well, you couldn't remember the title. Yeah, so we No, got, we but I got up. the email from her. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it didn't let me... Because I wanted to do... Have her do that book at our bookstore. Oh, okay. And I don't know who the hell I emailed, but like you were kind of like blowing me off. Yeah. So I emailed, yes, she was. And so I emailed somebody, and Sarah Silverman responded herself. And she said, Peggy, I would love to come to your bookstore, but I'm in Europe. She was like on oh, some kind of sabbatical, oh, and she okay. was going to be gone for months. And, oh, okay. and I said, oh, oh my God, she, she loves it Sarah's to me. You <laughs> <again. laughs> I don't remember that at all. But yeah. I think I would. Oh, we got so sidetracked. Yeah, so so now, Sarah. Now, all right, so that's about jokes. Joke. Okay. Now we're going to move on to teasing. Now, mm-hmm. whenever my brothers would tease me, my mother would, and I would go to my mom, oh, they're making, they're teasing. She'd say, that means they love you, Carol, because they're giving you attention. You know, but the teasing, some of the te- teasing oh, was on, funny. Mrs. Honey. <laughs> no, no, my mom. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> sorry, Mrs. Sierra, sorry. So, all right, so some of the teasing, teasing, it was lighthearted or whatever, and maybe I was a little too sensitive, I don't know. Um, but some of it was relentless. But, okay, so now... <laughs> I'm going to get through this next part. So when I got into grade school... We're here for you. Are you going to cry? I might, because oh, this is very aw. emotional. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't. And even when I wrote this up, even when I wrote this up, I'm like, oh, it brought me back to a time where I just, ugh, I didn't like it at all. I, I was in second or third grade, and I had to have my tonsils taken out. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I missed school for a few yeah. days. Back then, you had to go to the hospital and yes. stay overnight. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, when I went back to school, all of a sudden, kids started saying I had bugs. <gasps> don't touch Kale, she's got bugs. Uh, so I don't know if they thought I had lice. Lice, yeah. But it was relentless. And it was like, I'd go home and I'd be really upset. I never and heard this story. I never knew my shit. Yeah, you did tell I did tell story. Story. So, yeah. you story. It was. <laughs> you make me laugh too. She is yeah, yeah, trying to me with all of these things. things. I know. <laughs> so it was. It was. It affected me greatly. Mm-hmm. And um, at some point, my father told me I was being too sensitive. I was bringing it mm-hmm. on myself, and that was hard. 
And then so finally, my, I guess my parents might have told me, tell the teacher, tell the teacher yeah. that the kids are picking on you. So I finally was brave enough to tell my teacher, and her she said, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Carol, sticks and stones will break well, your bones. That's so helpful, isn't oh, it? But <laughs> names will never hurt you. And I'm thinking, now I'm in third grade thinking, Jesus. but they do hurt me. Yeah. These, but, you know, that was all. I, so I couldn't go to her, and I was so thankful for it when school was done for summer vacation. Of course. So that was a relief. And then I go back into fourth grade, it picks right up again. Oh. So I don't go to the teacher because I, I can't trust yeah, the teacher. Yeah, because sticks and stones. Really? Yeah, you know, really. So it obviously was so bad that my parents had to go to the school to talk wow. to the principal. And apparently the principal talked to the teacher because she got chastised for not. Good. So now she was picking on you? Well, she made me go out into the hallway. She goes, Carol, come out in the hallway as soon as my, you know. So in front of the whole classroom, I was pulled out into the hallway, and she yelled at me, and she stamped her feet. Why wouldn't you tell me? And I'm thinking, because sticks and stones would break my bones. And, and, and I'm, like, crying, and I'm little, this, that was this tiny little thing. So she made me stay out in the hall so she could go back into the classroom to tell the kids not to pick on me. Then I had to go back into the classroom. So that was that was hard. Yeah, Let me ask a question. Did you any of uh, did you have any friends that did that too? Like um, who were your friends who participated in it? I was well? so young to remember that. And I didn't want to get emotional for yeah. this one. That was rough. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Of course it is. And look, and you know, this is a, an important topic because look, this happened when you were in third yes, grade. Yes, third and fourth. And grade. here we are. I you know, know, this is something that people don't understand. And look what and happens look to what some happens kids throughout school, and exactly. they go around and they get yeah. violent. Exactly, and yeah. that's why I took out this article. Yeah, to the teenage suicide. Adriana Cush. Yeah. And this is before you have her name. Mm -hmm. And this is before internet yeah this is before any of that mm -hmm. so thankfully though the kids did stop picking on me and then by the time <laughs> I was in seventh grade my reputation was like oh Carol's a really good dancer oh Carol oh oh she tried out for the cheerleading team and I got a spot in the cheerleading mm. team and so I fought my way yeah. back and then there was this other girl who was being totally tormented for the way she looked. And she did have an odd look about her, but I stuck up for her. I fought for her. Yeah. And, they'd like, and I'm like, no, no, you don't do well, that. You were in that position. That's yeah. horrible. It's, it's, it's empathy. You practice empathy. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. And so, you know, I, I, that just was so important to me. And this was a hard story for me to share because even oh, I'm so glad you did even while you know I was writing this up it brought me back to that time and I'm like oh god and I think of kids that are being picked on and it just infuriates me well, we're we are in I think a really bad time you know with right. this now too well he, mm. the, the one thing I was thinking of like okay that was considered teasing yeah that was considered teasing. That's bullying to me. That's not but, teasing. That's back, bullying. Yes, to us now. But back then, bullying would have been physical. You're I right. Think, I You're think, absolutely right. I think yeah, if it's, I had gotten a hit or something, my parents would have been a lot quicker to come. Yeah. But, yes. but because it was sticks and stones and I was too sensitive. It's victim blaming at that time. We're, we're oh evolving. My God, that's a very good. Still at the yeah. time. But, be, you know, the, yeah. we're, we're learning and changing our definition of what it really is. And the more we understand about mental health and, yes. you know, and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. how the many different forms of bullying, which I'm sure you'll get into, you know, right. what is it? But at that time, what you were going through was victim blaming. Yes. It's, you're yes. too sensitive. You're wrong. Right. Don't blame. This is yeah. what everybody has done yeah. for so long. What's it's, wrong with you? Right. That you can't yeah. deal with this. Right. Exactly. And that's that's not no. Acceptable. Absolutely. Yeah. I had something similar. I, I just I'm not going to mention anything because again, I, I whatever right. I said. But with with my right. daughter is in one grade, and the teacher actually has said to me when I had to go and talk to the teacher says. He's just sowing his oats. Mm, mm, mm. And I looked wow. at this How was she, teacher. like 110 years no, old? No, <laughs> she was younger than me. And wow. I looked at her. I 
goat. He's not sowing his oats with my daughters. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. she goes, but it Good took me you. having to go in and yeah. sit there and for her to say that to me. Yeah. And I said, so yes. did I just hear this in this classroom? He's right. yeah. sowing his oats. Are you are you finding yeah. this acceptable? Yeah. You know, and Good so you. It, it was. No. And we, I, that mentality yeah. is still there. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. And it just, you know, I just think back to, and I'm sorry I got emotional, but it just, it really is still raw sometimes. Cause, yeah. You know, and I, it was almost like I didn't want to make myself vulnerable. Because if, no. people, if people hear that, they're like, oh, I'm going to tease you now about that because See? you're sensitive about that. Because you have probably You mean as PTSD? an adult? You're yeah. PTSD? Yeah, yeah or, probably. What? As an adult, you think that uh, telling that story? Like, I don't know. I would say, <laughs> Carol has cooties. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Or were you yeah, afraid of like terrible. putting in virtual? Bring it on, virtual people. I mean, yeah. we're not yeah. bring it on, yeah. you know, because yeah. at no. this point, it, you know, good yeah. luck, you know. Really, this is not. You don't have to be afraid of that kind of mentality. I know, I know, and but also when I was thinking, so then I, I was. Where is my other page? Um, okay, so. So I got through that. I became very popular for whatever reason yeah. in school, and, and I just... Because you're a nice person. Thank you. But I, yeah. I fought through it. I really did. It was important to me. Um, so let me see. All right. So I did talk about the, the, the teenage suicide, and you had the girl's name, and that, that was... Ariana li- Kush that was from def- New Jersey. That was definitely... Oh, well, that's the girl that's in the news now, oh, right? Just devastating. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, terrible. So um, let me see what I'm trying to. And again, the girl that was videotaped and there was she beating was, her up in the school. She was beat up in the school, yeah. and it was only after the videotape surfaced and after she committed suicide right. when an investigate a real investigation started and yeah. and the school and the school yeah. people personnel were brought to right. some sort of accountability, which blows my mind in this day and age. Mm-hmm. But also, it says in the article. And I highlighted this. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for adolescents and young adults in the United States. Yes. And I have, you know, I wonder too sometimes, because my father did have a gun rack, but he had it over the, what I have taken my life. Because I did come to a sense of desperation. And so I don't know if I would have taken my life, but it was, that would have been to me stupid. All right. But it's a valid question to ask in this day and age. And you know this because you didn't live in the time of cyberbullying mm-hmm. right, exactly and where it's constant gone. the constant exactly. attack of, like you yeah. came home from school uh, and, you know yeah, yeah. And you, exactly. i know you didn't you both did an event with uh, mary calvey recently she's mm-hmm. with cbs news cbs mm-hmm. news this week has been doing a very great job i do like like their news no, network i'm about setting the effects of mental health on teenagers. And, right, and, right. and today, actually, I just kind of jotted down something they had another segment on. They've been yeah. doing something yeah, every day this week. She had something she on shared it. on Facebook, and now I, I was like, oh, I'll remember that. Now I can't remember. No, I mean, they've been doing a real, very, very good job on it. But they, they had, you know, talk about the CDC statistics that in this in this realm of cyberbullying, girls um, experience more sadness, increased sadness, than boys. They're targeted, picked on, and so the cyberbullying, targeted and picked on in a public setting, they're four times more likely to have suicidal thoughts now if they are if they're the victim of suicide if they're the victim of cyberbullying. Yeah, four so times more likely to wow. have suicidal mm-hmm. thoughts, and three out of five mm-hmm. girls today experience increase like heightened sadness and hopelessness emotions. That's just three out of five. Yeah. No, so I have two daughters. You've got mm-hmm. a granddaughter. Mm-hmm. A granddaughter. You know, they're talking about teenagers now. Yeah. If you girls, ladies, or whoever's watching this have daughters out there. Yeah. Three out of five of them, you yeah. know, are experiencing some increased levels of sadness and hopelessness. And the cyberbullying mm-hmm. is a big factor here. Right. Yeah. Right. So, all right. So, you know, our hearts are breaking for the victims. Absolutely. But let's talk about the bully. The bullies, the bully. Bullies. And there's another story that I'll share. I won't cry with this one. I promise I won't cry with this one. But this is after I was married. And um, we were... <laughs> I need mean, more wine. Um, selfish. No, I was Judy just is selfish. Judy is selfish. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, you're going to eat it. (laughs) 
anyway, um, so when we, we, we bought our first house, my then husband and I had our first house, we had our son. Um, I hadn't adopted my girls yet, but there was a neighbor down, at, down the block, and she had some kind of facial issue. Like a scar? Oh, it was, it was disfigurement. Fig disfigurement. And she lived by herself, and she would, like if you would go by, like if I'd go by with the stroller, with Jason in the stroller, whatever, she'd go running and hiding in her house. Like she was like, you know, my heart broke for her and I wanted to reach out to her. And then teenage boys would torment her. And, and you know, they, it, was, it was horrible. And Rob, my then husband, he went down there and he made them move along. So then, thank goodness they didn't have guns because you wonder what would have happened they would come out in front of our house at late at night and break glass bottles. And Rob went right outside with the broom and he said, you cleaned it up. Well done, Rob. He made them, he, and, and mm -hmm. some of them ran away and there was a couple that did. And then these young boys, they would come and hang out with Rob. Like they respected him. Mm -hmm. And it was like they weren't getting something at home. Exactly. I was just going to say that, you know. And he was like the father figure. Yeah, to and, them. and we were so young. We were so young. Yeah. And yet we knew no. And he said, You ever pick on that woman again? He goes, You're going to have to answer to me. Well, that's yeah. where, you know, I, I always thought, like, you know, with, with bullying, it's a lot of learned behavior. Don't right. you think? Oh, yes. definitely. Or, or lack you're of You're getting learning. it somewhere. Right. right. You know, you're yeah. getting it from your family, from, you know, your you're, parents and most when, of the time. And you look at, I mean, I've always had this, I, I kind of, I think I created this phrase because, I mean, I, I tell <laughs> it all the time, but I go, Pam's beget pages you know for Say again pams beget pages like anyway i'm talking about bullying with girls so pams that's my word for passive aggressive mothers oh mm -hmm. okay beget passive aggressive girls everywhere yeah. wow you know and and you know you see this in the way because a lot you know you mentioned like in your time bullying was mostly physical right with girls it's not always that way i difference yeah. with ariana kush for i i understand mm -hmm. that was a physical fight and mm -hmm. and and with the cyberbullying but a lot of bullying with girls is not something you could put your finger on and say look at this yeah or she hurt her this way it's mm -hmm. a lot of passive aggressive behavior yes and you know, I've, you know, we've all had experience with this. You know, and when you look at the mothers, mm -hmm. and s you're not surprised that the children are mirroring right. the behaviors right. that they've learned from their mothers. Exactly. And so it really starts with us. Is you know, you know, can, you know what you do, and like in this case with Rob, is like you know right. they didn't. They ended up respecting him. Probably yeah. they didn't have this. Right figure right. at home to and, and it wasn't like how to we weren't nervous about what they could do i mean and this is again before well, guns yeah, there could be retaliation yeah. you know while yeah. you're sleeping and bricks through your yes. windows and exactly and that's what that's one of the questions i had too are we bystanders or upstanders that's the question. Are we? We're upstairs. I've oh, always oh, yeah. been oh, upstairs. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, I'm taking the, you know, all. Oh, the even room. when I was a kid, I wasn't the kid who got bullied. I was the kid who went after the bullet. And I remember right. the story you told here on this podcast, and I, I, I loved it, was when you were talking about how that class was oh, going yes. to go with after the teacher. Exactly, the with teacher. the teacher. I, and I had it because I had younger sisters, too. I have yeah. five younger sisters. Right, right. right. Bridget. <laughs> I have four younger sisters. <laughs> I have a lot of sisters. There's oh, oh, she, oh, nobody oh, acknowledges oh, anymore. <laughs> Bridget, Anna, Lori, Nora. Yes. <laughs> and I, I remember even when I was a little girl, because we're pretty close in age. Yeah. Like Maureen and Monica with their little doll carriages, <laughs> and there was this kid around the corner from us on Knickerbocker Avenue named Tommy Brown, Tommy and he was a little bully. He was always bullying all the, you know, little kids. And, you know, in hindsight, I think, okay, they were pretty poor people. They were, you know, th there was a lot of issues in their family, I'm sure. Right. And I remember that once he took their little carriage and he threw it in the street on Nicobagger oh, Avenue. Oh, no. And I remember I went marching around that block. I was probably like eight or nine years old. Yeah. And he never bothered them again. 
And my brother Kevin was like that too. He was a bully defender. Right. You know, you know, not a bully defender. No, no, he no, used no, to no. defend people <laughs> from bullies. bullies. Right. It was like nobody right. would mess with me because Kevin was my older brother too. And um and when Maureen and Monica were teenagers, there was another girl in Woodhaven that used to pick on them all the time. And Maureen and Monica came home one day and they were like upset. And Nora was home too. And Nora Nora was another one. She was like, I'm not taking any shit from these people. Right. And we went marching around and that girl was, Oh, 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 I really like your shirt. Oh. And, you, know, oh. you know, so um yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. People well, have to stand up to bullies. Yeah. That's the only way to stop them. And it's so funny because you, you mentioned that, you know, I could have, you know, post-traumatic syndrome from this. And yeah, but there was something in me, a strength that I, I that came up in me because when you asked if I had friends that would defend right. me or whatever, I had one friend, um, and this was when we were a little older though, like this maybe was seventh grade when I was just getting a stronger sense of self. And she, I don't know, she pulled something where she took my pocketbook and she dumped it all out and it, everything went out with, um, you know, pads from your yeah, pants. And stuff that was embarrassing. Horrible. Yeah. And when she did that, she was laughing, like, mm -hmm. and I went, no, we're not friends anymore. And I put everything yeah. out and that was it. I said, no, I can't be your friend. That you, Friends yeah. don't do that. That's right. Right, yeah. Well, and and she's like, what, what, what? It's, it's just, no. No. Well, and how are we, when you, you know, when she wanted I thought a you were going, from you. She, yeah. Or yeah. she, want, she wanted me. to belittle you for whatever exactly. reason it was. Yes. Yeah. And that's what your topic, when you said this topic, you know, bullying, joking, or whatever, right. you know, I thought, what what example? That, that, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I talk and I, I notice I don't finish my sentences. But <laughs> where I was going with this is my fear during the last presidency of this mm -hmm. because we yeah. had a president who it was a bully was a yeah. bully is still, is still a bully. bully but would always do it with i'm joking yeah, yeah. right yeah. and still does it with this right. and right. i go no. what is this example we are setting to our kids right you know right. and if he he's not the only one in all right. fact he was yeah uh, Christopher, Todd Christie was one, is another one. Was that oh, Chris, no, Chris Christie? Yeah, Chris Christie. He's one that, and I when he was running, I used to think the same thing. Shit. I said he would do that whole thing. The I'm bully, bully. I'm joking. Mm -hmm. So, in all fairness to Trump, and I, this is very hard for me to do. <laughs> is you know he's not the only one out there. He didn't mm -hmm. invent but when this you're whole the bullying. I'm I'm joking concept. But now but you're the you're, president of the United exactly. States. Exactly. You have no standards. Right. So, <laughs> no, you're right. But I just wanted to say out yeah. there you know that you know he wasn't he's not the only one out there that does that and so but he kind of gave this permission he gives permission mm -hmm. to this yeah. oh i'm joking you know if, but do you, know, you think that was... most bullies are, are boys and men no no, no. no. i no. think i think there are there are so many i mean we've okay here's a question have you ever been bullied we know you have you been bullied um not really say, no i remember once in I think I was in seventh grade when I had to wear glasses to see the, the blackboard. It was seventh or eighth grade. And the first day I went in and put on the glasses, some of the boys were calling me four eyes, but I just ignored them. Mm -hmm. And they never did it again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, I think bullies need a reaction. Right, right. And if you don't react, chances are, and it's not always true, that that they're gonna go on to somebody else. Right, that they'll right, right. you know they'll get the satisfaction. But there are from. so many forms now, and it's becoming of of bullying. Where it's yeah. not always just saying things. Bullying can be, ghosting can be bullying. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're talking about young girls as yeah. well. You yeah. know, or you know, developmental mm -hmm. children in general. Right. Um, there's workplace bullying. Isn't ghosting like ignoring somebody? Yeah. Okay. And and when you have. For example, say with the three of us, what if we just started ghosting you? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. just... Yeah. That's you know what I would do? Bullying. I would say, that's my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> right. But what if you are, what if you're a young girl? Right. You know, no, and, I know, and so I know. And then you're excluded. You're that's excluded. Horrible. And yeah. that's, yeah. nobody talks about it, but that's a Lacey, form of bullying. No. You know, no. when you look at how that happens with, you know, again, you know, that happens with adults. 
and yeah. more children are learning that from adults. Yeah. I go, this is, you know, so yes, you would say something, we would say something, right. but would, would four yeah. or five, you know, would, you know, 10 yeah. year old Peggy say something or 10 year old Carol say something right. about, right. you know, no, because you're still forming your, right. and trying yeah. to fit into a group, right? That yeah. right. That is clearly telling you they don't want you to be part of it, but right. not clearly, I should say, that is not clearly, you know, and so part of me is like, you know, I think with girls and boys, you know, you know, boys tend to be more physical. Right. Girls tend to do things more, you know, more right. passively. Right. But do I think that, or do you think that if there is this malevolent intent with it, or is it just that they are don't know themselves? They don't know how to express themselves mm. or you know or is it just that they it's more of a learned behavior and this is what they're doing i think it's an attention grabbing power play for most people who are doing that mm -hmm. they want to be the kid that now everybody look at me i have this power over this person here and how many bullies do you know that are just by themselves as a bully they usually have. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, there's you know there's a reason why the the phrase hen pet goes on, and and I have oh. chickens that will do that on there, but it, right. it's a true thing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. hen pecking is where you know you have a top chicken, you have yeah. this other chicken, and they pick on chickens, and and mm -hmm. and. <laughs> Kids and, and adults can be this very yeah. same way, especially right. when there's new members that come into a group or not. There's just going to be, for whatever, and you don't know any rhyme or reason, but if a group chooses to pick on one or two right. chickens or, right. or uh -huh. kids or yeah. adults, well, I obviously look vulnerable. The group goes with it. I was yeah. absent. Mm -hmm. And maybe kids did think I had lice. Maybe they thought yeah. I had been, because back then you missed some school, you know, you had, yeah. you, you know, you had to. Thankfully, I never had that issue, but for some reason, I came back having my tonsils out, yeah. and that became it's uh, an issue. Yeah, a bone. I don't know. Does you know, like know. adult you wish that little girl you would have said, "I had my tonsils out. I probably I did. don't have cooties." <laughs> well, they didn't use the word cooties. They said bugs, yeah. but. I don't know. I, I I don't. I'd like to go back and see who I was then to see how I did react because right. it obviously affected me yeah. so bad when I got home and my work, my school work, everything was affected. Um, I probably didn't eat, maybe or maybe I overate. I don't know. <laughs> but I I don't know. I I wish I knew. I wish I yeah. knew how I had responded because obviously it was working for them to like you know say that about me and it's, they, it's just why does somebody need somebody to be picked on why does somebody have to be you know why do you have to they're, elevate they're yourself? lacking something in themselves they yeah. don't have the confidence in themselves to just be themselves but, it, and but just, a lot of it was the popular kids that did it too so they yeah. The popular not kids a, are the ones who are looking for all the power. But it's not yeah. always a popular. This happens in every group. There is some, you know, right. I, I just find this, whatever it is, there's mm -hmm. going to be some sort of henpecking going on. I, I yeah. don't know about that. Um, right. Yeah. Well, it's it not, probably happens to adults, too, in workplaces. You know, yeah, so. it definitely, I, I had an experience oh, with yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm trying to think that. as an adult if oh. I did. Oh, as you, I don't know if you did, but I know that I had a, yeah, a boss that um, she made it very apparent that she, but I was at and that you point. Said she, I mine was female too. Which oh, is isn't that funny? I I just um, I didn't let it bother me because I'm like I knew mm -hmm. who I was and I knew what I was where I was yeah. at in my life and I'm like no. But it teaches well, you things of what you would yeah. never do yeah. or how you would never treat people and I, exactly. I don't know. It's well, teachers are bullies sometimes too. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, this was an example I mean, of it. But exactly, and I went yeah. to Catholic school right. and Which they was, woo, those yeah. not they Catholic were bullies school, with yeah. a capital B. The yeah. things that they made us do, the yeah. humiliation that the they thing. subjected yeah. us My to. My sister used to get sick every time there was this, a known sub. She, we used to yeah. call it at home Sister Joanitis. Yeah. Oh, 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 Sister oh, Joanitis oh. today because she's yeah. subbing because that, that nun was a bully. Yeah. Wow. You know, and a known bully. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, this, oh, well. this, um, yeah. I'm really sorry I got emotional. No, I'm, I'm I, I, we're authentic. Yeah. This is what it is. It's I know, I feel silly. Yeah. I was going to say I'm bugged now. You have, <laughs> you have experiences with bullies you want to share? You yeah. know, is this the way, how, yeah. what, what is your theory? Why do, what makes people bullies or don't make, you, uh, know, you know, or makes them, you know, no. are you, why does are you're being, being a bully. It's yeah. dinner time right, right now. now. You're for being a bully. <laughs> <laughs> She's very demanding. But I think the, one, the three things that we have in common is that we speak our mind, and, and we've yeah, raised yeah. our kids to stand up for themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know that with my kids, when they've experienced bullying, yeah. I, I, I've no. seen things that they've said either by you know confronting yeah. people or whatever, or, or they told me. Same thing. I said, you know, I'm proud that we're putting that out there. Yes. That they're not yeah. gonna let it. Yeah. Let it I, you know, I, whenever I see my kids teasing each other, I oh, try yeah. to step in. But, you we know. had a lot of teasing in my family. We did. It, it didn't bring you to tears. Maybe maybe Maureen and Monica got brought to tears a couple of times. I mean, I did it to my sister Nora once, and I never forgot it. And we were little. Right. And we had to walk out. So when we lived in Brooklyn, we were very young, and we, I, I, my mom said, take Nora up to cut and curl, and she needed a haircut. And when she came out of the beauty parlor, and we were, I was walking home with us, we had to walk maybe, you know, seven or eight blocks to get home. I don't know what made me do this, because I don't, I'm not a mean person, but I started calling her Monkey Face Malone. And all the way home I chanted, Monkey Face Malone, Monkey Face Malone. And to this day, I feel terrible sure, about it. You I do. apologize because to her. I, I have apologized to her. Oh, Laura, I'm my so gosh. sorry. And she was crying all the way home that I did that. Maybe there was yeah. something going on with. That's what I'm saying. I don't think a lot of it is Maleva. Maybe there was yeah. something going on with you at the time. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Were you I don't know. She had her hair cut. No, because I probably got my hair cut too. Usually well, we did yeah. everything together. Wow. So I don't know why I did that. Maybe because I was like nine years old, and, right, yeah, you know. Right, yeah. Yeah. But and, and you know, but I made her cry, and I never, ever forgot it. I'm going to be 71 years old, <laughs> right. and I still yeah. have guilt about yeah. doing that to my sister. So yeah. I guess that says something about the bully that I'm not. <laughs> right. Yes. You know. Yes. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well. Sorry, Nora. Yes. Sorry, Nora. Sorry, Nora. Well, I'm apologizing too. <laughs> But we enjoyed the wine. We enjoyed listening really? about the book. And um, the topic was bullying. And so our next podcast is going to be what topic? About chakras. Chakra I'm bond. so excited okay. for this. Uh, which yeah. I know very little about. But it's your topic, so we'll see how it goes. I can fill us in. Okay, awesome. uh, yes, I, I'm depending so, on you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for your patience. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Were we on for a long time? Um, we were on... The about, dogs are about an hour. Yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs> We're off, right? Not yet. Oh. Now, now we all say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>